out of here, everyone. Lost Lady here. We're back in action form. Winds of the Ominous Moon Attraction. That's right. It's more force of will all the time. Some of the time. Majority of the time. And I got one thing wrong last time I was saying things. I said we're going to look at green. I was lying to you. It's blue. We're going to look at green next time. <laughs> oh, still trying to get things together. Figures, right? Analysis of the ocean floors. Alias is how slip. This dude with glasses. That guy. He's a resonator wizard. Attack six. Defense seven. And he's a three cost. Okay. So if he's a three cost and he has that low of, of attack and defense, he better have some really good everything else here. Uh, let's see. He can spend a little time will to do a target. J resonator gains minus four hundred until end of turn okay and then you could do three time wills to return target non magic stone non general entity to its owner's hand um yeah this isn't a good card i wish it was i wish this was a good card but it's not if it was a two cost you lower your attack more and just have its defense at 700 i think that would work out for itself this clearly is a card that you're not meant to attack with, it's meant to use those little two effects, but it comes out too late in the game and for too cost of a price that it just doesn't really work in any deck out there, either Mono Water or Kaguya to begin with. You're going to be wanting to use that little time thing for other various things and it just being like target J Resident Games minus 400 just kind of is bleh for the most part and you have better return target non match stone non j roller entities in uh water anyway so overall it's not gonna outshine anything it just kind of loses its place altogether. not a good card blue leaf a better card than most but also bad one cost 100 attack 100 defense why did you do this resonant elemental and then it has its little bash this card, return target resonator total cost two or less to its owner's hand. Okay, uh, weird and dumb. And then you have inheritance one, return target resonator total cost one or less to its owner's hand. Why was it inheritance one, just regular will? And then blue will is, you do it for a total cost of two or less. Uh, it's really weird to me, because if it was a zero cost, there would be a reason to actually use this card. But the very fact of the matter is, it's not, and it's not a quick cast, and it's just kind of all over the place with the way this thing goes. So, in a lot of ways, it just it's really sucky, and it's sad that this blue leaf didn't really get the same kind of treatment that white leaf did, uh, or light leaf, I forget what it's called particularly, but this had a potential to be a better card, and it just kind of like, we need to make sure it's completely balanced, and they ruined it by making it too not playable. Like you just, you either trade or you, you put it out there and then you banish the card to also make them trade up. Uh, it just doesn't, it's not great. It doesn't really work as well as it should. If it had a zero cost for inheritance, there could be a reason to actually use this deck, but no, there isn't. So why bother? Drifting little moon. Oh dear Lord. Uh, we're getting to the bad cards. One cost, water, 500 attack, 500 defense. This card cannot be attacked. Pretty cool. Resonator, uh, moon, slash treasure item. So we have some combos going on there. Then you tap it. This card deals 400 damage to target rested resonator. Pretty cool. I can see that happening for a lot of like damage stuff and whatnot. But here's the big problem here. Rest for drifting little moon, you control. Destroy target resonator. It just kind of lost me there. I get what you kind of want to do for the extra little bit. And the very fact that you could do a little uh, tap and you deal 400 damage to target resonator. Uh, it's pretty cool. But largely, you rather just tap two of them and just deal 800 damage to resting resonator. Or even just do the whole entire uh, get another card to do it. Because honestly, another card would be better off in comparison to this card. So in a lot of ways really bad if it had something like barrier or something like that it would make more sense because you could also use it to attack it would be able to stand out more clearly but 
it just doesn't really have that, so it kind of fails a whole bunch. And I really wish that was not the case, but it just simply is. There's too much things going on that make it want to be combo worthy, but it just doesn't get there. There's too much setup to do it, and there's not enough, like, we're going to get another Drifting Little Moon. It couldn't be, like, two Drifting Moons or something like that. It really could have been better to some degree, and it just didn't work out. Could have been something, but it's nothing. Lightning Speed Crash. What looks like a good card, don't it? Three costs, quick cast, chant Aurora. So we got a lot of little things going on for this. This card deals 800 damage to target rested J Resonator. If the weather is thunderstorm, it deals 12, uh, 1200 damage instead. Not a good card. Believe it or not, it's not a good card. There are better cards out there that get rid of J Resonators uh, if you mix in with water. And if you are still using water, there's still another card that Shayla could use in comparison. And it's just better outright. So the only card that this could really go into is a water deck that uses Thunderstorm without Shayla. And in that case, I have to wonder your judgment of cards and your ability to combo things in particular. I'm aware that it can happen, but this would not be the case in point to use a card. And if you're going to go ahead and make Weather Thunderstorm without Shayla, why not just use somebody that can destroy a J Ruler or some other jazz like that? So, yes, this is a card that has no home and doesn't work. So, bad card. Lightning Waterfowl. Woo! Pump up the jam, everybody. Pump it up. Three costs in all water. Eight attack. Eight defense. Resonator Beast. Flying. And this card gains swiftness and barrier as long as the weather is thunderstorm. Ooh. Ooh, it feels good. It feels so good. What is this mess and garbage here that we got going on? 800 attack doesn't seem a whole lot until you add the swiftness in and you add the barrier in, and you add the flying in. For a three cost, that's a lot of value for a lot of not work going on for Shayla. Shayla should run this card for sure. If you're running Shayla, there's no reason not to run this card. And that's about it, really. Like, are you gonna do a Mermaid Travel? Because if you're doing Mermaid Travel with Shayla, good luck to you. I wish the best for you, but you want swiftness, you wanna hit hard, fast, with Shayla Thunder. And this is just the the pinnacle of just like, yes, Shayla Thunder. Yes, very. Just makes me so happy. Magic Soldier of Time. Mobilize of Time. Well, and it's also a two cost. And it's attack and defense are garbage. Magic Soldier of Time. Terrible, terrible card. It would be interesting if its effect was whenever this card attacks or blocks, draw a card, then discard a card. You have to do that, you're not allowed to choose otherwise, so why not just make it so that's the cost? You just draw a card and then discard a card. The whole entire milling purpose of things is not the best in Force of Will, so it doesn't feel that strong to me in comparison to just a simple, you have to mobilize it. If you're going to make it mobilize Golem, then make it mobilize for a proper reason. If this was a one cost, makes sense. If this was a higher attack, like let's say attack was 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 a thousand, let's say it had flying or swiftness, give me a reason for why it's mobilized aside from this little effect that it has going on here. It feels more like a penalty than anything else. Just garbage. Meditation four cost rest all resonators. Such a pretty 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 card. It sucks. It's garbage. Don't use it. Lethargy is better, Thunderstorm is better, a whole bunch of other cards that you could use to rest Resonator is better. Breb uh, Ball is better than this. So, yeah. I would have loved for this to be like a really good card. Look at that art, it's so amazing, but it's just nothing. Praying Mermaid, oh, Why are all the mermaid art just like, just so on point this set? Just, mm, it hurts me. And, at the very least, we do have a very interesting thing going on here. It's a three costing mermaid, 800 attack, 800 defense. And at the beginning of your main phase, the weather, if the weather is, the weather turns thunderstorm until end of turn. So it makes it automatically thunderstorm on your turn. 
not always the best for Shayla. Shayla likes to go with rain and thunder at the same time. So, not exactly the best thing for a Shayla deck to actually have, especially when you have three cost resonators that are far more powerful. Hint, hint, wink, wink. But, in a non Shayla Thunderstorm deck, this does make it work. Uh, so, yes, you would use this in literally not Shayla decks. Why would you use a not Shayla deck for Thunderstorm? I don't know. Hopefully you're a better constructor than I because I can't think otherwise. But it does have a mild purpose, at least. Very niche play. Roar of the Soul! It's a one cost Ayu card! <laughs> For real, it just is. Put up to two target soul resonators from your graveyard into your hand. What is that target? Just soul resonators. Who is it for? Just Ayu. Who else is going to use this card? I don't know. Someone that uses soul resonators? Are you for real? I don't believe you. But, at the very least, look at this art. Look how cool it is. We're going to see a lot of copies of this card just flood the market because you only need one. And it's pretty dang cool, but why is it rare? I don't understand. Ah, whatever. Point being, good IU card, garbage otherwise. Spirit of Time, five coster, automatic garbage. Okay, fine, I'll look at the rest. 800 attack, 1200 defense. Not looking good so far. Also a spirit. Mmm, I don't like this. One, produce a time will. Spend this will only to do all the other stuff. So it's effectively... A non-will will converter. I don't see the point of running this card. Even a Kaguya deck, you're better off just let's stall for time and hope for the best. Everything else, no, I just why bother? I don't want to bother with this. It's kind of dumb and stupid. And frankly, I don't know why you would ever run this card. Meh. The distortion of time. One cost. Look at the top card of your deck. You may put it on the bottom of your deck, draw a card. Standard effect, we've seen this before with approaching the truth, what not, what else could it do? Oh wait, God's Art, Chrono Break! One cost, uh, water, time, and just a general. Remove this card in your graveyard from the game, so it has God Art Remnant. Your opponent skips their next recovery phase. Play this ability only during your turn. Ho! Oh. Ho 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 ho! Here's where it got interesting, folks. Like, wow! That is mean, mean, mean. And for being able to play this card and just you have the draw effect on top of this big bomb that could set up at any point in time really makes me happy because this is just like a straight up what can we do to make this card nastier, effectively? And I love the idea of this card, and I hope they make more cards like this. I think Chance, that God Art for Remnant or something like that, would be really, really handy. I love the idea for sure. It's not too broken, despite the fact that it feels like it could be. Because you could easily remove it from the graveyard. You could do a whole bunch of things that just kind of ruin the situation for a lot of people. Which is pretty heckin' cool. But largely, I just love this idea of just god arting with a chant <laughs> it just it feels such a great thing it's two cards in one effectively two cards in one you got a little game plan along with it and you get to draw a card so you weed out your deck very very cool love the idea good stuff the dragon lord's breath it's a one costing water quick cast return target resident total cost three or less to its owner's hand okay kind of a bad shayla's return but you know what's fine for the most part. And then we have this awakening bit here, which is actually kind of cool. Two, put target resonator on the bottom of its owner's deck. Whoa, that's pretty cool. So we get one to return for a three, and we get another one to the bottom of its deck. And then if we awaken it again, or awaken just that, we get to draw a card. Yeah, actually kind of cool. Works really, really well in a Kaguya deck. In that stall Kaguya deck with a witch time, amazing card for it you should run this card you should run three of them they're perfectly amazing well four four is the highest but it's really amazing just to be able to draw a card along with this but to also put another target resident to the bottom zoner's deck it's going to really help with stalling and help with a lot of other cool stuff here 
Also, this art is just astounding. Just the way this little dragon is coming out of nowhere, just going like, I'm going to end time and space. That just is so cool looking that way. Just so cool. The end of passion. This card is so awesome for what it does. Three costing card, water and then whatever else. Target J Reginald loses all abilities and becomes a 0 100 until end of turn. Now with that in mind, this effectively makes it a really good card to get rid of a bunch of J Ruler uh, oriented decks like Zero and, and the like and it just makes me really cool and happy about this. But what's even better is that it also is an IU card and it's the best kind of IU card where it's just like, oh, but if it's IU that happens, all your abilities uh, retain are retained and become a 2000-2000 instead. So she effectively gets something else to play with. She can't be targeted by this card. And it's effectively used for sideboarding material. Like you can still use this card for any other just deck out there. Just make sure that you're not facing IU first. Then, then you gotta see if they're using their J roller, and if they are, put this card in. I love that. I love that so much, and it's such a good balanced card for what it does do. Three cost thing. It's gonna be enough to like actually like get that out there. Could totally ruin a whole entire tech strategy. Kind of ridiculous, but it's what's needed, and I love that idea so so much. Really really good card. Love it. Sideboard material. Yes. The Last Thunder, what once was looking like a really good card, makes me anxious about otherwise. But look at how cool this looks. Three costs in the card. But this card gains quick cast as long as your hand and uh, as long as in your hand and the weather is thunderstorm. Search your deck, hand, and or graveyard for three cards named the Last Thunder. And remove them from the game. If you do destroy all non-magic stone, non-J roller entities, if you search your deck, shuffle it. Effectively, it's God Art the card. You only get one chance to rightly use this card, The Last Thunder, but it just is such a good card to have. It's a three board nuke that you can only do once. That is so cool. I love that idea so, so much. And I think it's something that a lot of Shelly decks are going to be experimenting with and trying to figure out how they could use The Last Thunder but it's not overly powered because it still takes up four cards in your deck. It also weeds out your deck if you don't want a whole bunch with it. It does so many things at once, and it makes me just go like, oh, this is my deck building brain just trying to figure out what it's gonna do. Ah! Point being, I don't see my use for it in my decks, but I know it has a use and I can't wait to see people actually use it. And I do feel it's actually gonna be used for show. The Witch's Minion. It's a Cthulhu 6-6, cost 2. At the beginning of your main phase, produce one time will, spend this will only to play all those things. Not a bad card, it's just not a good card. Like, the Witch's Minion, it looks kind of ugly and whatnot, I don't like its art style personally, but that happens with a lot of Cthulhu's. Uh, regardless, I do feel like it's going to be actually used in a time with time spinning witch deck just so it has that little produce the time will thing going on for itself but aside from that you're not really going to use this no other decks going to use this just reduce that little time time will going on there and for the most part it's just kind of a meh card to begin with that six six um doesn't really say a whole bunch about it but at the very least it's there and that's kind of cool so yeah Kaga, you can use this. Time Bound Spirit. Attack 200, Defense 200. It's a one coster. Resonator Ghost. And it has one of the coolest niche abilities that I've seen yet. I kind of want to use it a lot. Whenever you play a guard art, you may put this card from your graveyard into your field. That's pretty cool. And then when this card is put into the graveyard from the field, draw a card. Also pretty cool. So it's a chump blocker twice over with Kaguya, and Kaguya's gonna use a lot of god arts, so she has that along with it, and she has a lot of neat little abilities that just generally go along with the whole entire thing. Pretty freaking cool, honestly. I'm really surprised that they made a card like this just kind of as wonky as it is. This is just a janky card. I'm gonna say that right now. I don't think it's gonna win games in that sense of I have this whole strategy pound around with, with it. 
but it can win games. It could throw your opponent off and just go like, I have no cards on my field. Suddenly I do a god art. Hey, guess what? Time Bound Spirit is back and so are his buddies all up there. And then he's like, oh, I'm going to destroy all these. And I'm going to draw four cards. Draw into another card that ends up killing them or something. Or you god art into another card. Kind of ridiculous, really. My point being, largely, I'm very impressed with this card and what it could do. And it makes me excited for it. But it's probably not going to win games unless it's super jank. Time Dilation 2 cost chant. Draw two cards. Pretty cool. Not the best ability, that's for sure. But Blood Spray definitely has something like that that does the same thing. Then you have this Awakening cost. Rest target J Resonator for that one time. Not the best. Not really going to use it, obviously. Um, you have other cards to do that, but it's still cool to have that little option, especially considering that this is just a regular slow chant. But the two, ho, oh, that two time will recover target J Resonator. That's that's sickening because Kara could use this, Shayla could use this, pretty much anybody that just uses their J Roller could use this, and it, it's kind of insane to me that. It could effectively win the game this card and you get to draw two cards while you do it effectively it does cost four will but my bigger point being here uh, it's a lot more powerful than it looks and its only problem is that it's not a quick cast which to be fair it does a lot of cool stuff that makes it just kind of like extra angry so yeah good card can't wait to see it come into play also love the little little time thing that got's going on there Really good stuff. Unyielding Dragon Lord Ragnarok. <laughs> One of my most excited cards as a six cost. So you'd think, oh, this is gonna see play. Why bother? But its attack is 15, defense is 15, Resonator Dragon. Already, it can be used with Kirik to bring it out, and that's a pretty cool idea. Of course, it does have a way to stop said abusion by doing this little thing. Well, this card enters the field if it was played from your hand. So, it can't be summoned via like Lumia stuff, Kyrick stuff, or just generally just going like, hey, this card comes out here. But it's still a freaking nifty, nifty card uh, to have and to see what it will do. Uh, which, later on as we look, reveal cards from the top of your deck until you choose to stop or until you reveal two cards that share a name. Then put all the reveal cards into your hand. Ayu gets to draw her deck. That's crazy. And what's even crazier is another ability that works with it. Discard, discard seven cards. Destroy target non-magic stone entity. So you get to kill a J roller with it. You get to kill anything that you want with it. Uh, as long as it doesn't have barrier. So that's pretty heckin' sweet right there. I'm really, really surprised how well it goes with it. And this is a card that's like, it's turn six, you let me get summoned, the game is going to end. And I love that idea, and I think any card that's six cost should have the same kind of presence in terms of the game's going to end. Because I do think that any game that lasts longer than six turns probably shouldn't happen. <laughs> but we are running in, in a in a rush type of meta as of right now and we're gonna eventually get life gain so hopefully we start getting to that six turns and be able to see the bigger bodies come into play and just like really wreak havoc till then though love the idea of this card being a good finisher where rabbit of the null moon and yet it has no null effect okay where rabbits whatever but we have a two cost and for water and then two cost for regular so it's a four cost, that's a thousand thousand, and then when it enters the field, each player draws a card. Where rabbits, where are you going with this? Why is everything so bloody expensive? I don't understand this. Are you setting up for something in particular? Because it makes me think that you actually are. A friend and I were discussing this before, and we were thinking that maybe a J roller is going to come out later on and goes, you don't want to play where rabbit uh, void wills, or some jazz like that. I could definitely see that happening because it would make a lot of the were rabbits that we have right now actually good, but it also is extra confusing because 
this is all in the previous cluster, not in the new cluster that's going to happen very, very soon. So whether or not that's going to happen, we don't know, but that is the only way that these war weapons are going to be any kind of good, because when each player draws a card, that's a bad effect on top of a four cost on top of just it being a thousand thousand. Really confusing things that you got going on here. I feel like one part of the design team was just not on point and the other part was in comparison. So I'm really confused how they design these cards sometimes because you'll get a lot of polar opposites like this card and just it's not that bad. not good. It's not good at all. Wings of Ragnarok. 700 attack, defense 800. And you get a little time thing, this card gains plus 200, plus 200, and flying until end of turn. Obviously, you're going to want this for a Kagia deck. It being a 3 cost is not really made of a big of a problem. And then you also always have a time will that you can spare to make it gain plus 200, plus 200, and flying. So that's pretty cool. I love that idea, and I think it's uh, a pretty good card for what it does do and what it can be effectively. Also like the art of it. I don't know what it is that makes it so interesting to me. It's just kind of like a weird dragon, like Arr! But pretty cool. I like it. Which is Laminate. It's a two cost chant that produces two time will. Kind of cool in the sense that you're effectively uh, converting will to be its own little extra thing. But it that's all it does. It just produces time will. Which if you have the stone that produces time will to begin with, are using the witch herself not really much of a problem so bad card very bad card it's kind of sad really really it is and of course here's our last card the variant of the day where it just is a suckier version of the wings of Ragnarok although now that I look at it it's just a green recolor which is just kind of like pff, whatever and this card gains flying until in a turn if it's the water Sure, that makes it more accessible to water decks, but you have better cards that are also flying. So why is it just flying? It should be like flying and plus 100, plus 100 attack or something. Don't just make it flying. I just, this is what hurts me about the whole entire variant situation because I understand where they're trying to go with it and trying to make sure that things aren't too overpowered or something, but this is very clearly a more obsolete card than the other one. And it makes my side that they just are kind of promoting this kind of garbage. It happens, but yeah, we end on a sad note for water. Regardless, I do think uh, water is a very prominent figure in Force of Will as of right now. And I feel like it's only getting more of an uprise with more IU cards and more thunders uh, where you can make it happen and whatnot and this new time will mechanic going on here along with the god arts and I feel like it's cards that are great are going to be really great and the cards that are bad just you're not going to see it in play it just ain't going to happen regardless I do think that we're going to see a lot more of these these water cards come into play and, and really wreck things up, like change the meta just because of it, but not to the widest degree as Light does. It's kind of the second best uh, cards, uh, card set in this set in terms of like what it can do, but by no means do I think, do I think it's a game changer in the way that Black, the way that Black is or the way that uh, Light is in terms of how cards are played and whatnot. Uh, green, oddly enough, is pretty mellow, but again, it just has its regular strong cards. This is more of a 50-50 thing, and red just finally getting up there. So, yeah. Water's pretty good. 50-50 shot if you're getting a good card with water. Um, really hoping that we continue on with this Force of Will. Thank you all again for watching this review of Winds of the Ominous Moon's water set. I hope to see you again for the next set that I do, which is green this time for realsies. Ah, maybe I won't get it wrong next time. Until then, thank you all for watching, and I shall see you all later, okay? Sayonara. Bye-bye.